Hi, we are going to talk about quantum numbers. This is so cool that you're learning it. I'm going to give you the basics. Don't be intimidated by this. I promise you can do it. This will make sense. Uh, really, here's the definition of, a, uh, of what drives quantum numbers. Every electron has a unique set of four quantum numbers. All right, there are four quantum numbers and every electron will have a different combination of those four quantum numbers. It's really like an address. And I put this right here. Um, it's like where you live, you have your uh, house number, the street that you live on, the city you live in, the straight you, uh, the state you live in. Um, that's the same thing with quantum numbers. We're giving an address to every electron inside of an atom. So let's look at the four quantum numbers. First of all, uh, we have what's called the principal quantum number, and that symbol is N. It's really just the energy level, okay? It's just the energy level. And I want to pause right here. If you do not know how to do electron configuration or orbital notation, look down below. I've included those two links. You've got to watch those videos first. This will make no sense at all unless you know how to do orbital notation and electron configuration. So stop, pause, go watch those, come back, and then this will tie it all together. And you go, ah, I get it. Um, so watch those if you need to. If you know how to do it, let's keep going. All right, energy level. Um, so energy levels, one, two, three, four, infinite. We have an infinite number of energy levels that are inside um, of an atom. Um, now on the periodic table, it goes up to energy level seven, but we're creating um, more atoms, right? Um, through transmutation, so there's an infinite number. So here's an example. Uh, let's say that I have an element that's in the third energy level, the P subshell, N equals three. So the principal quantum number is three. Um, now, number two, angular momentum quantum number. This also has another name called azimuthal, in case you see it. That's just the second quantum number. Its symbol is a cursive L, um, and this indicates subshells. So we have our blocks, subshells, that's the same word. Um, S, P, D, F, here we start getting into that theoretical, a G. Um, and we assign numbers, okay? We assign numbers to make this easy. Instead of writing those letters, number, right? We have to give these subshells a number. So you start with zero. S is zero, P is one, D is two, F is three, G is four, etc. cetera. Um, now, remember the subshell indicates a shape. And if you need to watch that video, go to my playlist where it talks um, atomic structure and you can look at the subshells. So the sphere is the S um, subshell, three dumbbells, that's the P subshell, five dumbbells, D, seven dumbbells, seven. Um, so uh, you're going to see how those shapes come into play with orbital notation. Um, and what we end up doing is doing some labeling with uh, those different, uh, the different shapes. So don't let that confuse you, I promise this will all come together. Let me give you an easy, an, an easy example on this angular momentum. Let's use the example still of the 3P. Well, we're in the P subshell, so the L, the angular momentum, is one. Just because you and I have memorized, oh yeah, we've given the number one to P, so L is P. Now, I want you to notice something. L can equal anything from zero to N minus one. So if n is 3, the only options I have for L are 0, 1, and 2, 1 less than 3, okay? And so that would indicate in the third energy level, guess what? We have 0, we have an S, we have a 1, that's the P, and we have a D. Let me show you on the periodic table. This is going to be an aha moment, so cool. So there is your 3, sorry, there's your 3S, 3P, okay, so energy level 3, S, would be uh, angular momentum 0. And then energy level 3, that would be principal quantum number 3. In the P subshell, the angular momentum P is 1, L equals 1. And then we come down here to energy level 3, the D subshell. So that angular momentum is 2. Now notice, I can't have a 3. By definition, the N and the L cannot equal each other. Why is that? Well, the three is F, and our first energy level in the F is a four. We don't have a three F. That's why you can't have L equals three, because there's no three F. Kind of cool. We're going to see some things start to come together. Now, our next one, this is the magnetic number. 
I'm going to so you can see this, the magnetic quantum number, and its symbol is M sub L, so lowercase m, little m, with the subscript uh, cursive L. And this is the orbital, so why you have to understand orbital notation. Um, M sub L can be anything from minus L to positive L, and all the numbers in between. Um, so again, here's my example. If I've got a 3P, M sub L, so it can be anything from negative L to positive L. Well, the P, remember, L, angular momentum, is one. So M sub L could be negative one to positive one, which means negative one, zero, positive one. That tells me that there are three orbitals inside of the P subshell. And you and I know that's true from orbital notation. Two electrons fit in every orbital. The P subshell has six electrons, so there are three orbitals. They each fit two electrons. If I were to draw that as um, orbital notation in the 3P, here's what it would look like. You would have three orbitals. I do my 3P. Um, and let's say that it's full. Let's say that um, it is indeed argon, okay? Let me show you right there, okay? So six electrons, third energy level, my P subshell, it's argon. Um, so one, two, three, use Hans rule, one um, electron in each orbital. Then we go back and double up. This first line, that would be your minus one, um, right here, magnetic quantum number. This is your zero, and that's your positive one. Um, so sometimes I've seen this written as like M sub L minus one. Um, I've also seen it M sub minus one, M sub zero, M sub positive one. Um, so we actually give a label to those little orbitals, okay? To those orbitals. Um, so if I was looking at this electron right here, it's quantum um, number three, it's Angular momentum, it's in the P subshell, is one. And its magnetic number would be M sub L minus one. I'm narrowing down where that electron exists. Cool. Okay, let me erase that so it's not quite as messy. Our last one, you're almost there. Fourth quantum number is called the spin quantum number. And it is represented as M sub S. Stands for the spin of the electron. Um, so you can have two options, either a positive one half or a negative one half. Positive means the electron's spinning up, negative means the electron's spinning down. So I've given an example. I, um, here's my 3P, in fact, let's write this right here. Let me show you, okay, um, 3P. So again, third energy level, N equals one. P sub block, so the, P, the angular momentum L is one. Um, if I'm looking right here, this would be M sub plus one for the uh, magnetic uh, quantum number. And then if I'm looking at this electron right here, well, that's spinning down. So that would be M sub S negative one half. In contrast, if I were looking at this electron right here, that M sub S is a positive one half because it's spinning up. So notice what we've just done. We've given an address to every electron. Third energy level, N equals three. P subshell, L equals one. Um, orbital, M sub plus one, right? And then mm -hmm. to give everything a unique quantum number, this M sub S is plus one half, that M sub S is negative one half. Those two electrons right here there have the same N, the same L, the same M sub L, but what differentiates them, make them unique, one spins up, one spins down. Kind of cool. So there's your four quantum numbers. Now, I want to practice this two ways with you. The first way is um, I want us to write the uh, four quantum numbers for one of these electrons. Okay, I'm going to randomly pick an electron. We're going to write them. And then over here for my second example, I've also seen um, questions where you're asked to um, validate are these permissible, yes or no? And so we'll practice that as well. A little side note, this that we're doing, I've created another video of quantum number practice. It's really short, it's only like five minutes. I will also include that link down below if you want to do more practice with quantum numbers. Okay, so um, let's say, ooh, let's do, I haven't used orange.
let's use orange. Uh, I'm going to circle this one, okay? We want to, hmm, that orange isn't working very well, sorry. We want to give the four quantum numbers for that one. No more orange, that's all I have to say. <laughs> okay, so that electron, what are its four quantum numbers? First we go to energy level. Here's the energy level, right? There's the energy level equals, oops, level, it's going to equal your N. So N equals two. And then we're going to go to the angular momentum. Well, that is the subshell. The subshell right here, remember that's going to be the L. S, let's check it out, is a zero. We give that the number zero. And remember that's just something we've created. We call that zero. So the L is going to be zero. Now I check myself. I know the rule on L is that it has to be at least one less than N. Yep, it is. It is at least one less than N. Now my M sub L, that can only be plus or minus L. Well, if L is zero, I only have one choice. M sub L has to be zero. And you'll notice that in this subshell, um, there's only one orbital. So it is M of zero. Okay, that m sub l is a zero. That's whenever you have s, you'll only ever have one orbital and the m sub l equals zero. Now this electron for my spin is spinning down. So what's the spin quantum number? Negative one half. And we just gave the four quantum numbers for that electron. Cool. Now let's come over here and see if these are permissible. Um, so n equals one, great, so I'm first energy level. Right away, if you want a visual, here you, here you would be. First energy level is just right there, okay? Your hydrogen and your helium. Those are both in the S subshell. Um, L is one, oh, I see the problem. Remember, L has to be at least one less than n. They can never be equal. So well, this is a big fact, no. Nope, that is not permissible because n cannot equal L. L has to be at least one less than N. Okay, let's go to number three, or number two. N equals three, so third energy level. L equals one, great. So that tells me what block would I be? What subshell? This would be my P, remember? Because P is given the number one. Um, and then N sub L minus two. Oh, that's where it doesn't work. N sub L has to be plus to minus L. Well, if this is one, I can only have minus one, zero, and plus one. I can't have a minus two, can't have a minus two. So that, mm, big fat no, not going to work. Now, how this would work if L was two. If L was two, a D block, then M sub L could be minus two, minus one, zero, plus two, a plus one, plus two. But mm, that doesn't work. That M sub L can only be plus or minus the L. Okay, let's look at this one. So energy level two, Great, let's check it out. So here's my energy level two. Right here on lithium, there's my S subshell and my P subshell. L is one, okay, great. Um, L has to be at least one less. Yeah, that totally works. So if L is one, what subshell are we? P. Remember, that's just by definition. We said the L for P, we're going to call that one. M, oh, so sorry, M sub L is zero. Totally works because M sub L is plus to minus L. So if this is one, I could have minus one, zero, plus one. Yep, there's my zero, good to go. Um, and then my N sub S would be a plus one half, plus one half. Uh, so that, yes, yay, that one works, that one works. Okay, let's look at this one. Energy level two, N equals two, L is zero. Yeah, it totally works. Um, energy level two does have an S subshell. And remember, um, L always has to be less than one at minimum, great. M sub L equals zero. Yep, that also works because M sub L is plus or minus L. So if this is zero, that's the only option we have is zero. But here, that's where it falls apart. M sub S can only be plus or minus one half. It's never going to be written as a one. So that one is the no. Okay, great. So there you have quantum numbers and you can do a little bit more practice with an additional video. You're going to do great. It's an address of four numbers. Take some time to digest that. You're going to have to memorize a couple of things. You'll do great on your test. You'll do great on your assignments. Have a good day. Thank you.